Not only am I getting my tuition fully covered, but I'm also getting paid to go to grad school. My name is Natalie. I am an environmental engineering student at the University of New Mexico, and I have completed one year of grad school. So I feel like I have a little bit of experience under my belt where I can kind of explain some of the things that I did during my undergrad and early years of grad school to get me to the point where I'm at now. All right, first things first, <laughs> is establishing good relationships with your professors or with your managers if you are working because they're the ones that are going to help you succeed and this is not even just for people that want to go to grad school this is like if you want to enter the workforce they're the ones that are going to be able to connect you with the right individuals so that you can get that job that you wanted or you can enter that grad program that you've always wanted to so for me was establishing those connections early on throughout my undergrad from the first year to my last year i was really engaged with the civil engineering community and i was talking to professors i had my undergrad advisor who essentially led me to my graduate advisor that i have now so then step number two is finding an advisor with funding that is key because we're trying to go to grad school for free and they need to have some type of pool of money that they can bring you on basically hire you and pay you so build those relationships ask around if there are faculty that are bringing in new students to do research so i wanted to show you all an example of an email template that i created and i sent out to one of my professors when i was looking for an advisor with funding. So let's take a look at the email. My professor already knew a little bit about me, but I just went ahead and added a couple things that I had accomplished in the last four and a half years of my undergrad and just kind of show my interest in this field and kind of why I wanna to go to grad school. And then I showed that I did my own research before contacting him and I looked at different types of grants. So I inquired about that and I asked, you know, if it was still feasible for me to get into it and what were some of the opportunities that he might recommend for me to take on. So with that, step number three is highly consider doing research. I'm speaking on behalf of the experiences that I have gone through. And for civil engineering, environmental engineering, really any type of engineering, research is key to getting funding. But I have, and I know, some of my friends who have also been able to get a degree, a master's degree, and get paid for it, get their tuition paid for, but they don't do research. It's a little bit harder, I would say, because with research, you're essentially providing something to the university once you graduate, your thesis. So it's your research topic, it's what you spend your two years or your one and a half years of grad school doing and writing so that by the end of it, you've published a paper and you have your name on it, you have your title and you have the name of the university. So they're benefiting from the paper that you've produced and that in turn gives you money and gives you funding to get a degree. So that's why it's a little bit easier to get funding if you do research. So I would highly consider doing that. But again, it is possible to get funding and your school paid for if you don't do research. It's just gonna probably take a little bit more time. Step number four is apply to graduate assistantships. So if you can't necessarily find an advisor that has funding, then apply for these graduate assistantships because this is another way, another avenue that you can go into that they can give you funding. There are different types of graduate assistantships. What I am is a research assistant and I personally am biased, but I think this is the best one that you can get because you are getting paid to do research. There is another one called teacher assistant, a TA, which you've probably heard about, where they get paid to go to grad school, but you're also having to teach, make lessons plans, grade, and then all on top of your research and your classes. It can become a lot really fast, and I know some of my friends that are TAs, and they just rather be an RA because you don't have to teach. And I mean, teaching is great. You become a mentor 
and you learn from it, but I can still become a mentor and teach undergrad students through my research, but I'm like still benefiting my overall thesis. Graduate assistantships can be really helpful in paying you because in a year you can get anywhere between $24,000 to $40,000, which breaks down to about $2,000 a month to three thousand dollars a month this is the range that i've looked into and i personally have seen these ranges from the area that i live in but i'm sure these ranges can be a little bit different depending on where you live and the living expenses and all that kind of stuff so with that i mean this stipend that you're getting every month which by the way is every month at the end of the month you don't get it bi-weekly like typical jobs so if you are just living off of the salary. There's gonna be a lot of planning that goes into, you know, paying your bills and making sure that everything is aligned to when you get paid. These checks aren't coming in as fast as typical checks that you might be used to. With that being said, yes, you can live off of this stipend generally, you might be kind of on a stretch if you are renting and living on your own. I could do it if it was my only stream of income, but thankfully I actually have two streams of income because throughout undergrad and throughout grad school, I have worked part-time at an internship. I am thankfully able to kind of spread my time in both places and collect two streams of income throughout the year which has been really, really helpful and I'm super thankful that I have this opportunity. So if you are kind of hesitant to see if like you could do both work and go get your master's degree, it is possible, but know that it's not easy. <laughs> it's uh, for people who are driven, they are ready to go after it and they can balance their time. My internship though is really lenient and really supports students so they know school is first so if i can't work you know more than 20 hours a week they're okay with it especially during finals week when things get really hectic so i would highly consider looking at internships and uh, seeing if they can work with your schedule because that is the way to do it so i am thankfully able to do a little bit of everything and work there and then also work at unm so it's possible and my undergrad self did not know that. I thought before in my undergrad that you could only do one. You could either only have an internship or you could only go to school and have a research assistantship. And it's possible to do both. You also have to have a really good advisor who is okay with that because sometimes advisors are not okay with sharing you. So if you're looking for an advisor in your early steps of a graduate program, like ask them if they're okay with you keeping your job or finding a new job because those things um, end up being really helpful when you graduate and you're looking for a full-time job. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or video recommendations that I do as environmental engineer, I would be happy to. I have already some engineering videos that I will link down below in the description box. So yeah, thanks for coming to my channel. I will talk to you all very soon. Ciao.